So, can you lick your elbow? No. I cannot. I can't. I feel like it's a challenge. Yeah. I mean, you can try. Absolutely not. But I won't give it a go. <clears throat> I haven't prepped my elbow. That's okay. A long day. It is, this is yeah. not going to go well. I like this. No. No. Like not even. No, no. I mean, like, oh. you're a good like right. that, like, yeah. like that distance. Oh, away. Like, well, <laughs> you're like you're like this no, distance. That, that, like, you're this far. Like that, that's that's, that's, that's like about right. I mean, it's close my arms go kind of numb after that. Mm. I think I have a stretch to it. That's not good. <laughs> my answer is no. no. My answer is also no. Same. <laughs> you just can't do it. Um. So, Aaron, um, why are you called oh, Bun no. Aaron? And <laughs> where Where did this come from? Because okay, I don't. Why is Aaron? So Aaron, for some reason, is called Fun Aaron, and I don't know why. Okay, so explain yourself. Yeah. I don't actually know this. So if you're at Soulmates, um, specifically if you were in the second session of the Ambassador Seminar, so I'm I'm like the Northeastern District Ambassador, um, but <laughs> yeah, if if you were in that seminar, you would know that um, it was it sort of Tara Bevan and me running it, um. And so Tara came up with a wonderful, this is Tara Edmonds by the way, um, came up with the wonderful idea that we would all give ourselves nicknames. Um, but of course, most of the ambassadors do not have nicknames, and so Tara came up with all the nicknames. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, Tara nicknamed me Fun Aaron for some reason. So you know what? If Tara Edmonds is watching right now, she could explain it better in the comments. <laughs> But we do have fun together, but so we do. I'll put you down as fun, Aaron. I'll so take that. Mm. You know what? Yeah. Good job, that's Tara. Oh, fair that's enough. Good, that's good. That's fair enough. Miss Sue, one more. Yeah. Yes, one. We'll do one more. Mm -hmm. Um. So, would you rather have everything you draw become real, but you're like permanently terrible at drawing, or um only fly as fast as you can walk? 100% fly as fast as I can walk. Definitely I fly. I can't draw. Like, I, at all. I would be, ter I'd be terrified of what you drew. <laughs> so, Sarah drew, actually, like, the photo, the, the picture started off really, really good. Mm -hmm. So, it's like a photo of the three of us from, I don't know where I'm from. It's, um, from so it, the, if you go onto the, our cover photo. It's our cover oh, photo. yes, on Facebook. It's that. I drew that on Facebook. And, like, the clothes and hair are very good. But then like they're really good. Mm -hmm. The faces so are good. somewhat tragic. So the I'm faces really... are bad. Like no offense, mate, but I think we all agree. Are not I, good. I cried laughing out of. Oh, oh they're so bad. It was incredible. It was so, so good. Fly. So, so fly. I think we'd all say fly. Yeah. Just so that doesn't come to life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That can all oh, be. Cross. Yeah. Cross. Wonderful. Okay. Um. So we are just gonna um get started with our call to worship tonight. Um, so just like every other week, um, our call to worship is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, um, verses uh, 10 to 18. Okay, um, So I'm just going to read that now. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Let's just pray. God, tonight, um, as we come into your presence, um, celebrating that you brought Jesus back to life again. Uh, God, would you be with us and would you help us to continue that celebration and that worship tonight, God? Um, would you help us all to, to worship freely now um, as Amy leads us um, in worship and be with us throughout the rest of the night. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Aaron.
So as Aaron said, we're going to take a little bit of time to worship together. Uh, today is Easter Sunday. Um, it's such a day of worship and celebration. And we're going to be singing a song called, let me just go with my mic in. Uh, we're going to be singing a song called This Is Amazing Grace. And it talks about what happened today. So actually the, the lyrics will be in the comments as well. Um, and they were also in our story. So feel free to join along with us. the power of sin and darkness, His love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King of all for peace. He sheds the whole earth with holy thunder, and leaves us breathless in all and wonder.
so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may, and after, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So obviously we all know that today is Easter Sunday, so the day of celebration, a really um, important day in the life of the church. The day we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, and you might be wondering, how is this relevant to the shoes of the gospel of peace? Just you wait. We're going to explore that a bit later on in the night. But first things first, we need to know what the shoes were like that are being referred to in this passage. So unfortunately, these shoes are not like your, your Nike Air Max or um, your lovely white or slightly dirty Converse. Um, in fact, the closest thing that you probably have to these shoes is maybe a pair of sandals or a pair of flip-flops or sliders. Um, so for me, I don't have sandals because I feel like sandals are for the slightly older generation. Correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong, but... I have a pair of flip flops. Dark and soft. I'm not even, I'm not down with the kids. I don't have sliders, but you know what? We'll live with our flip flops. So I have my flip flops here, okay? So we'll leave those on the table. Not good practice to keep your shoes on the table, but we're going to do it for now. So my flip flops are a wee bit um, worn, you could say, a wee bit rank, maybe. Um, and you know, that's because they've been used every year for the past four years. Um, and to be honest, whenever you're trekking around a muddy field in Castle Allen, um, that's probably to be expected. You're going to get your shoes a little bit worn, a little bit muddy, um, and so they're just not going to look perfect. Now, looking at these flip-flops, you might be thinking, why is this part of the armour of God? Because this doesn't offer much protection. And you know you'd be right, these flip-flops don't really provide any protection at all. Most of your foot is exposed. But the sandals that a Roman soldier would be wearing had spikes um, on the bottom of them, or really grippy soles. Um, so they would be fairly comfortable too, um, and also would be very breathable, uh, which would allow the soldier to march several miles without any pain. So the spiky or grippy soles on the bottom of the sandal um, would allow the soldier to stand their ground and not slip during battle. Um, the next bit's a wee bit gruesome, but also um, it allowed them to stamp on their fallen enemies. Um, so especially whenever the whole army was moving forward at once, their enemies, if they were on the ground or slightly low to the ground, would be punctured by lots of different soldiers' spiky feet. Um, and so these, these spikes were just very helpful to have on the soles. Um, but yeah, so when Paul was writing this, he understood the importance of having peace in life, and thus how we need the shoes of peace um, just as much as all the other pieces of armour. So just like these Roman shoes uh, protected and helped the soldiers on the battlefield, the shoes of the gospel of peace protect and help us on the spiritual battlefield that we face. We can't be focused on our goal if we're in pain. If we're in pain, maybe walking over rough ground um, or stony ground. So personally, whenever it comes to me, um, if you know me fairly well, you'll know that I don't really like wearing shoes um, and would much rather run about in socks the entire time. But there's no denying it that whenever you go outside onto a stony path or the stony driveway, um, it's going to hurt because there's just so many little like points going up into your feet. So just like that, um, a barefoot soldier would be distracted um, because they'd be having the same pain. And you know, if you're taking something out to the bin on your stony driveway with no shoes on, it's going to hurt, and you're just going to want to get it done as quickly as possible. Maybe not in the best way. So. 
we'd be distracted from our goals just as the Roman soldier would also be distracted if they didn't have shoes. In Ephesians 6, it tells us to stand firm with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So you might also be wondering, what can disrupt our peace? And the answer is really quite simple. The devil's schemes. Whether it's something that affects us directly or something indirect um, that maybe makes us a wee bit scared or unsure, it can all disrupt our peace, which will compromise us and our safety. But what's the purpose of peace? And what is the gospel of peace? Well, peace helps us to stay grounded and simultaneously stand our ground. The gospel of peace is the good news. And here's the link. The good news is that of Jesus' death and resurrection, the Prince of Peace. So we can continue to fight the good fight confidently whenever we have the full armour of God on, because we have our feet fitted with the good news that Jesus died and came back to life again for us, for me and for you. Being equipped with that knowledge means that there's nothing that the devil can throw in our path uh, that will make us stumble or distract us. So what's the purpose of the shoes of the gospel of peace? Well, for starters, we have to walk a really long way in them. Just like the Romans would have had to have walked miles in a day in their shoes over rough terrain. And if you've ever hiked up a mountain, um, my parents are both quite fond of going on mountain walks, um, you'll know how important it is to have the right footwear. Otherwise, you're going to end up with quite sore feet at the end of the day and probably a lot of blisters. So the shoes of the gospel of peace are this for us. They're the right shoes. The second thing is that we're to move forward without hesitation. So without the shoes of the gospel of peace, fear and uncertainty can start to creep in and prevent us from spreading the good news. We won't be effective soldiers if we hesitate or worry. But with the shoes of the gospel of peace tightly fastened on our feet, we can move forward through the rough terrain without hesitation and without worry and fear. And finally, we walk together in formation. So whenever we're in formation, we will intimidate the enemy and break through any threats. And the formation is church. We must all be fitted with the shoes of the gospel of peace and walk together. Staying in formation allows us to spread the good news effectively. It also means that we can remind each other of the peace that we have, the peace that the devil cannot steal from us. So today, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, we need to have our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, so that we can walk onto the battlefield knowing that Jesus died and rose again for every single one of us. There's nothing that the devil can throw on our path that we can't walk over, that we can't stamp on. Surrounded by our church family, when we have the shoes of the gospel of peace fitted securely on our feet. Let's pray. God, we thank you um, that you give us this armour and that you equip us with this armour. God, help us um, every day to have the shoes of the gospel of peace on. Amen. Okay, um, so we're going to spend some time um, praying um, over... Um, couple of topics that we have been praying over um, throughout the recent weeks. So um, we will both pray at the same time over these and we encourage you guys to actually do the same. So even if you're in a room with other people or maybe you're by yourself, you can pray inwardly or you can pray outwardly. So um, first one is let's take time to praise God um, for everything that he has done.
thing. So like you know, it's just doctors and a social worker is like, yeah, I'm what's you? Retail workers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, let's pray. Facebook and Instagram as well later on tonight so that you remember about it. Um, but our challenge for this week is to take five minutes each morning whenever you wake up to meditate or quietly reflect on Jesus, celebrating his death and his resurrection. And then to go into your day knowing that the gospel of peace is that Jesus died and came back for you. Um, so personally I think that's a really important thing to take into the week and I know that that's something that um, I often forget to do um, but actually to take God's peace and um, what the gospel of peace actually is into your life and your everyday uh, work as well is really important so that's our challenge for this week. Awesome Karen. Um, each week we've been taking um, just a few minutes to share um, what one of us has been learning in that week so I'm just going to share um, Mine's quite brief this week, but I'm just going to share what I've been learning. Um, with this week being Holy Week and today being Easter, I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, as I'm really trying to focus myself on um, on the cross and what Jesus did. And God really showed me that Easter Sunday is such a day of transformation. So when we look at the difference between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, um, we see a lot of things transformed in a whole new light. So we go from the tomb being... Um, a site of death and despair to being a site of celebration. Um, we see a severed relationship between us and God on the Friday be transformed into a beautiful reconciliation on the Sunday. Um, we see what looked like a hopeless situation on the Friday transformed into the most hopeful future we could have. Uh, we see silence on Friday transformed um, into the, a roaring lion that is Jesus rising from the dead. And we see defeat transformed into victory. And that got me thinking about um, Maybe when we look at our, our lives, maybe you feel like you're going through a bit of a season um, that feels more like that hopeless kind of side, that feels more like, like a metaphorical Friday. Um, even with what's going on in the world, maybe that's um, getting you down. Maybe you're kind of feeling that despair. Um, but actually God showed me that he has overcome death. Um, once and for all, he's overcome it. Um, once and for all, he has overcome um, this hopelessness. And actually he can transform what we look, what we look at and see hopelessness. He can transform that into um, such a hopeful future. And we had Bible study on Thursday, as we always do. 
And we looked a little bit about how God transforms our fear and our um, how he transforms what we're like, what's the opposite of free? Bound, what we're bound to. And yeah, yeah. um, so he takes what um, we're bound to and he releases us. So we go from being free from something and then free to something. So maybe you're free from fear and free to be fearless. Um, and I think I would really encourage you to reflect on that in your own life. Um, I ended up filling up a whole page of the things that God has freed me from and what he's freed me to. So even just for example, um, free from shame and guilt and um, to be free to be forgiven. So he transforms um, what we're bound to and he um, turns that into um, us being released and us being stronger in his purpose. So I really encourage you to reflect this week on how God has transformed you um, and in light of Easter Sunday and Good Friday to Easter Sunday and um, just look at how he transforms you. So that was all we've got time for tonight. Um, just an announcement that we are starting our week off mm-hmm. as of after tonight. Um, uh, Tom team get a week off after Easter. So that means there won't be any podcast this week and there won't be any Friday video this week. Mm-hmm. But we will, we will be back on Sunday. So we're going to have our Sunday morning kids video um, as we've been doing and our Sunday night live stream too. Mm-hmm. So we have a week off but we're back on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Anything you guys want to add? Just keep an eye out on the, the team on mission social media and we've still got our worship playlist um, on Spotify called Glorify. It's on the IMYC account. Um, so definitely go give that a follow because it's got all the songs that we've been doing on Sunday nights um, as well as the songs that we've been doing on a Sunday morning in our little home church. Mm-hmm. And if you've got any suggestions, feel free to fire them our way and we'll add them in. Yeah, yeah. Check out our podcast from this week. We were looking at um, Faith Over Fear. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of banter in the middle of that as well. So if you want a bit of a light-hearted yeah. half an hour, check that out on our Spotify as well. Um, yeah. I think that's all. That's us. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining yeah. us and hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.